11 years, 11 years in the making. <laughs> I am so excited right now. You have no idea. What I don't know is one, how much it's going to actually sound like a real drum, and two, how quiet it's going to be. I'll stand by that title of this video. It is a little clickbaity. I got you, my dude. Dude, 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 dude. Hello, YouTube. Jeff Bosco here. What do I got here? This is a drum I designed. It's made of fiberglass by Lane Kennington. Um, he's a pretty well-known fiberglass drum builder. I found him on a couple different um, drum making forums looking for DIY fiberglass drum building ideas. Well, it was here about two, two or three weeks ago. I'm finally getting around to testing it. And I wanted to do it on camera. So I've had this idea since 2015. And uh, since then, I've had like fits and starts about how if trying to find somebody to help me build it or, you know, learn how to do it myself. But I did not want to do that at all costs. I had just given up on the idea of trying to learn um, fiberglass well enough to do it myself. I've already taught myself to do enough things in my life. I don't need to start from zero on something like that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still nervous even doing this. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is put the bottom head on first, because it's, it's the top head that's gonna tell everything about whether this idea works or not. And I want, I don't want to find that out first thing. And it took me six years to find Lane um, just on a fluke the way I did. Yeah, so the idea is a lower volume drum that actually sounds like a drum. I can't remember the specific moment it occurred to me, but it was probably during a vacation I took with a bunch of guys up in Maine. We stayed at uh, one of our friends parents cabin the first time I remember thinking about it was on the way home from that trip I'm probably assuming that at some point during that that staying in the cabin I was probably listening to people play guitars and singing and wondering well why can't why can't a drum set fit in this situation uh, that's how I think the idea was born I'm not even remotely sure what kind of tuning will get the best results for what I'm going for But I'm gonna just assume that some, something like a moderately low tuning will do the trick. And uh, I had some really crazy ideas of how it was gonna work, but um, this was August of 2009. Yeah, so it was a little, it was about a little over five years of thinking about it, getting frustrated and forgetting about it for a little while and then coming back to it from the start. So it was basically like three different phases where I started thinking about it and then certain things about how drums work would occur with me and then a, one piece would fall into place then another piece would fall into place and then it was like when all of those things locked together it finally dawned on me and um, uh, one of the first things was you know I don't even remember what the name of the forum was but it was a forum for inventors with their bring their ideas and there was a thread there pretty much the consensus was that drums are just loud, get better technique, learn to play quieter. And there's a, a lot of reasons why this answer annoyed me because, you know, I was, I had played drums in church for a long time and I had developed technique to play quieter. And I knew at that time when, I, as I was reading this, that I don't like the sound of drums playing, being played lightly, whether it's with hot rods, brushes, uh, mallets, or just, you know, light hits. When I watch a drummer, I want to see them hit the drum on, and I want to hear the drum. But it wasn't quite uh, solid in my head at that time about exactly why that was. Oh man, oh man. It's happening. It's happening. So my guess is for this idea to work, this head has to be tweaked. I continued thinking about it. This is probably, this would probably be like, yeah, uh, somewhere at the beginning of 2010. 
And um, the next thing that clicked into place was um, I was recording some drum tracks in my bedroom at the time. This probably would have been later that year, if not the beginning of 2011. Quite frankly, it might have been even later because I don't even remember. Um, but um, I was fooling around with um, just pressing my thumb into this PDP snare drum and hitting it and whacking it. And um, I've always been obsessed with completely open sounding drums, every everything I record. And uh, I was always trying to get the best sounds that way. Um, so I was quite surprised when I actually liked the way that sounded. And uh, it took me a while to figure out why. And it wasn't even at the time, it was like months later than that. And um, when I realized why, it was because you know, even though I'm muffling the sound, pushing down with my thumb, it was actually forcing more vibration into the shell. Once I realized that, it cemented something in my head about why I like to hear drums hit hard. It's because I want to hear the drum shell in the tire drum sound. I know this is going to sound good enough to be somewhere fit somewhere into the, the quiet drum thing what I don't know is one how much it's gonna actually sound like a real drum and two how quiet it's going to be so those are the questions I have so close so close I can tell already, it's, it's happening. I can tell already. All right. It's not what I was hoping for. I, I wasn't expecting it to work perfectly the first time anyway. But that feels like you're playing a real drum. Nothing, nothing else happened for a long time, and um, I started to get frustrated, and I stopped thinking about it, and uh, at one point, I was like, let me just start from ground zero, and I thought, why is a drum loud to begin with? Well, surprisingly enough, that, that very basic question never really occurred to me, and when I started thinking about it, I started, I went directly to uh, a rototom, and I, I thought to myself, a rototom is just pretty much just as loud as a, a similar sized conventional drum. So that that pretty much told me that the shell itself doesn't play a large part in the loudness or quietness of a drum. So I narrowed it down. So the loudness of a drum isn't really about the shell. It must be about the head. And so you have this really hard piece of plastic tensely stretched over a bearing edge. It's all about how hard you're hitting it and how much that head is vibrating. Because if you know, if you take a rototom and just lightly muffle it with your finger, it, it's gonna be quieter. There's not enough interaction with the bottom head. You know what? There we go. Okay, I'm thinking for this idea to work, it would be with much shorter depths. So that was one of the things I was worried about. But I decided to make this to try and go for a, a normal dimension drum on the first try. What I'm gonna end up doing is cutting this shell down to uh, five, five inches and making a snare out of this and see how that translates. That kind of sounds like a drum.
There we go. Doesn't sound like a great drum, but it does sound like a drum. Yeah, so my initial thought that the top head needs to be tweaked was completely wrong. In my original thought experiments, I wouldn't have thought that the top head plays as much of a role in the tone as it does. So that that's one thing that did surprise me. Once I put that together with my previous uh, observation that I like the sound of the shell, I thought, wait, what if I can muffle the batter head while still allowing enough vibration into the rest of the drum to get it to sound like a real drum? And that's the very genesis of this drum here. Now, like I said, this is made out of fiberglass, and I knew it needed to be fiberglass because fiberglass is a lot more resonant than um, than wood. And the way this works is, uh, I guess this is, is, is the best time to uh, actually show you how this works. take this head off here. And before, I, before this head comes off, I'm just going to say, if I'm not worried about um, patents because this idea is so stu stupidly simple that no one would ever get awarded a patent for this. And if somebody tried, I'm not going to, it's not going to stop me from keeping on developing this. And if somebody else wants to make this, feel free. Because everybody else is me, and I know it sounds kind of arrogant, but this idea is so stupidly simple, I can't believe I'm the first to think of it. All this is, is a great big rounded overbearing edge. That's it. But since this is uh, fiberglass, it muffles the batter head, and still vibrates the shell and there's still enough resonance in the top head because this is you know it's a hard material it's harder than wood it's more uh more resonant it still allows enough of the vibration from the batter head to vibrate the resonant head and i have a clip that proves that this drum, as crudely designed and built as it is, does just exactly that.
I was quite pleased about how close this got to what I was thinking as crudely designed and built as it is. The other thing you have to understand is my tester of close mic. Uh, one thing I realized after I did that test is that uh, the inverse square law, if I move mic far enough away from both drums to get the conventional drum about half volume, my drum would be not half the volume, it would be a quarter of the volume. But yeah, because one of the things I was, I was hoping it would be less loud than it is, but when I realized the inverse square law applies, that it made me, uh, made me even more excited. Some of you might say, well, that just kind of sounds like a little bit more natural of a sound than uh, a Ringo Starr tea towel sound. And um, I have to say that's probably accurate, but it's not all about how it sounds. I can tell you that this drum is actually easier to get a good sound out of. When you hit it, it just responds. I frankly find that very appealing. One of the things that annoyed me about the answer that, oh, if you want to play drums softly, you just have to have better technique. It's, it's very elitist. And uh, I'm all for making instruments easy as possible to play, to get as many barriers out of the way of creative expression as possible. And that kind of elitism makes me to think, you know, are we really going to get to a point where only the ones who play the hardest instruments to play are real musicians? It's like, um, if you can't play the French horn, you're not a real musician. Or if somebody makes a French horn that's easier to play, that's somehow cheating. I completely reject that kind of thinking outright. Also, I have a lot of um, things I'm thinking ahead of how this design will work for certain other applications so uh, that's another reason i'm not really worried about other people trying to develop this idea um, i'm i'm all for it um uh, uh build a better mousetrap and may the best man win so since i'm already thinking 10 steps ahead here um i i'm not worried about that and i know um other people aren't gonna think of it think of other people are going to think of different things for this and um, they're not going to think necessarily about the things I'm thinking about. So I'm very excited. Uh, I have the resources to put behind this. Um, if anybody wants to uh, get involved in this project, please let me know. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe.